Welcome to this Last Mile Profits video, the last word on the last mile. What do the new CEOs of Royal Mail and incidentally Polish Post have in common? Take a look at the latest Last Mile Profits video to find out more. Experience the future of convenience with modern Expo parcel lockers. Cutting edge innovations that bring parcel delivery to a fundamentally new level. Follow the link in the description to find the best solution for your business. Gary, we've already done pints and parcels. How about planes and parcels? Yeah, there seems to be some activity where there's uh, people moving from the airline industry into the into the parcels industry. Just as everyone's trying to take their parcels off of planes, uh, the, 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 the leadership seems to be moving around. So for those who are uninitiated, we had a chat with Gary just before the recording. And the, the obvious one is uh, Emma Gilthorpe who is apparently going to be the new, or maybe already is, the new CEO of Royal Mail. And her previous role was CEO of Heathrow Airport, is that right? I think or was it, it is, yeah. yeah. Heathrow Airport, yeah. So, um, planes to parcels. And then, what's actually interesting, we're not going to focus on that today, but the new CEO of Polish Post, who have a few challenges, similarly to Royal Mail, is the former CEO of... But Gary, seriously, Emma has got a huge task ahead of her. What's your take in terms of, you know, choosing someone from outside the industry? You got any views? I've got very strong views on, on this, and but obviously by Royal Mail is my customer, so I'm going to be uh, circumspect in how I, des I describe them. I don't know Emma at all, um, I, I, and I, I wish her every success in the role, and as you say, it's a huge job to take on. And she seems, if you look at her pedigree, it, it seems to look like she's got all the transferable skills to go and make a massive success of it. But I think when, when you've been around the houses a few times, like you and I have, you know, I've been in around this world for sort of 30 years, the number of times you're introduced to somebody that, oh, here's our new CFO, here's our new CEO or whatever, and they've, they're not from parcels, they're not from mail, they're not from logistics, but they've got the transferable skill set. So many times, 18 months later, you're meeting their replacement. Because for whatever reason, it is a weird little world that we work in. It is a weird little niche. It's not even a little industry, but it is a sort of a niche interest. It isn't as simple as people think it is from the outside. And you've either got to get with the program really quickly um, or you're, you're going to struggle. And that's, that's, that's in a nutshell my view. I, I tend to agree. It's more difficult. Having said that, if somebody really has good generic managerial and strategic skills, I think the key thing then is to have somebody who is their right-hand person. You know, if you have somebody like that who really does know the industry, then perhaps it could be a great tandem. The challenge would be, of course, to find somebody who has the knowledge, the skill set, who will be able to work well with somebody from outside the industry. Um, because I think one of the challenges, Gary, it's not just understanding something that is pretty specific, which is our industry, but it's also uh, credibility with the posties who, delicately speaking, have been disappointed a few times. I think you're absolutely right. I mean, Royal Mail's 500 years old. It's highly unionised. It's very traditional in, in, its, in, its, in its way of working, if you like. Many, many people there have got decades of tenure. Uh, and even you know, people walking the streets delivering, the, delivering stuff and people in the head offices have been there a very long time. When I, led, when I led a team there, I'd, I'd only been in the organisation for two or three years. The average length of service in my team was north of 20 years. So, so there is an institutionalised nature um, that, that's, that's a real challenge. You know, whether, whether it's the disgruntlement of the, of the postie on the street or the, the, but this is the way we've all, always done it mentality in head office, it, it's a big challenge to turn a cultural ship like that around and change direction. Well, look, Gary, let's see. As, as you do, um, I wish Emma all the success possible, partly because I'm one of the guys who retained my uh, shares from the original um, uh, offering to the public in the UK. Oh, wow. So, so I'm actually a shareholder. Luckily, it's not a conflict of interest because I think they're, they're sort of worth about this much. But I retain my shares, so I do wish her all the best. Let's well, she's not, she's not the first Royal Mail female CEO. Of course, Moya Green just popped into my head. Where did she come from? Bombardier aircraft manufacturer. So, so, so not only, yeah, 
planes to parcels again. And and I, I think um, I think Moya was definitely someone that polarised opinion. You know, she was definitely, uh, as we say in English, a Marmite uh, character, lover or hater. But you know, she achieved a lot. She kept the, no strike days under Moya Green, and the business did transform. So so perhaps. To, to, to you know, the, uh, the woman's touch or the airline influence or, or combination of both might be the thing that Royal Mail needs for the next few years. So, dear listeners, let's leave you with a thought. Is Emma going to be a Marmite CEO? Let's see. It will be interesting, perhaps, Gary, in a couple of months' time we can take a review and see what the initial feeling is. Thanks for watching this Last Mile Profits video. For more up-to-date Last Mile news and analysis, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on LinkedIn.